Hi, here is Enzo Caputo with SwissBankingLawyers.com. We are here in Zurich, Paradeplatz, with Caputo and Partners. And today we will connect with Simon Esbata from Sao Paulo, Brazil. And we have a lot of questions for him, a lot of questions on HERC number two, the Brazilian Voluntary Disclosure Program, who started just two days ago, the president of the Federation, the Brazilian uh, government, opened the Voluntary Disclosure Program in Brazil, the program number two. Simoesh, when will HERC 2 start? Or has it already started? I heard something, something about the president of Brazil who said the HERC 2 has already started. Is that true, Simoesh? Yes, Enzo, it's true. Uh, HERC 2 is officially open. Uh, it was open this week, April 3rd. And it's, it, it's, it already started. We can take a look at the law. The law that released HERC 2 is the law number 13.13428 of uh, March 2017. And the regulation by the Brazilian fiscal authorities, the official number is uh, Instrução Normativa number 1704, and it's officially open. Uh, now people can, people were waiting for this, for the release of the second program, and now it's officially open. We recommend everyone to participate in this second program. Simoes, how much? Would it cost to participate this time with HERC 2, with HERC number 2? Usually, it is more expensive than HERC 1. Usually, the second voluntary disclosure programs are more expensive. How much somebody has to pay, somebody who wants to legalize their assets, their offshore assets? This is a critical question. Uh, HERC 2 had an increase in the penalty, so now we have a tax rate of 15% on the income and also a penalty of 135%. This is the difference from Herx 1, which had uh, just 100% of penalty. But we also need to clarify something uh, very important and very specific. The assets, they will be valued uh, based on uh, June uh, 30, uh, 2016, and then the dollar was really high. And now you have to take, you have to make a conversion, the currency, based on that uh, uh, rate. And then you're going to have, uh, at the end of the day, uh, an increase in the, in the tax rate. We calculated uh, HERT1. It was something, a range between 22 to 27%. Now HERT2, we, uh, based on our calculations, we reached something around 36%, 37%. Even though it, we had an increase in the tax rate, we recommend people to participate because, uh, as you, you can see, we had a, one of the biggest increases uh, in, in, the, in the declaration programs. So uh, we expect if we have another hurt, which is something uh, we don't know if we're going to have hurt three, but uh, it was more than 10%. So... The recommendation is to participate in HERC 2. Is there a difference between HERC 1 and HERC number 2? If there are differences, what are the differences? What is the difference between HERC 1 and HERC 2, Simois? Well, and so uh, basically HERC 2 was a copy of HERC 1 with uh, the difference that I just mentioned. Uh, we had an increase in the penalty, so now it's more, uh, it's more expensive. But the, the, the rules, they are basically the same. Uh, we, the discussion was about the PEPs. Uh, the PEPs were not included in the second law. Of course, that we have some uh, 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 people questioning these things uh, in, our, uh, in, uh, in front of the judges, and they are getting some decisions, positive decisions. So we recommend them to, to look for the best international assistance to help them, because sometimes we can do something even for PEPs. But the thing is, it's not a big difference from HERC 1. Basically, you you need the same declarations as you needed in HERC 1. So the the and the, the biggest difference, in my opinion, is the increase in the tax rate. Should somebody declare the asset based on a film or based on a picture of the assets? 
You know, there, is, there are two conceptions. One on the film is more historically, and the other one on the picture is just an instantaneous picture, just a moment. Well, Enzo, uh, as we have experienced in Hertz One, this one, this is one of the biggest questions uh, regarding the Brazilian Voluntary Disclosure Program. It's uh, it was a mess in Hertz One, uh, especially because of the position that the Brazilian fiscal authorities took. They said it was a film, a dynamic and a retrospective. You had to go backwards to declare all the assets. The Hertz Two, uh, it. Even though it repeats the same uh, rules as Hertz One, it brings, uh, in my opinion, something more like a film. So they they put it on on Article Two, uh, for example, that uh, specifically they say y you have to declare the things that you had in, uh, in the past. But even though this new uh, characteristic of Hertz Two, I would say that the film is the best approach, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer why, because then you are more prone, you're, you're able to defend yourself from the fiscal authorities. You, you have the proof that you, uh, uh, that you had that specific amount. The law states that you have to declare the assets in June uh, 30. And then uh, I think it's uh, easier to declare those things, uh, those assets, um, if you declare it on a static uh, approach. If you go in, uh, into a dynamic approach, then you have to go backwards. And this is the biggest question. How many years should we go back? Should we go back five years, which is the time of the prescription in Brazil, or should we have, or should we go uh, into the criminal conduct and then you can go backwards until 16 years ago? So that's, in my opinion, it's a mess. Uh, we we shouldn't uh, enter into this kind of discussions since the law brings us a specific moment. Uh, I would uh, recommend people to declare based on a static point of view, static point of view of the assets, a picture of the assets. Simoes, what is the procedure? Tell us something about the procedure. And so the, the procedure is basically the same. Uh, the declarant should adhere to her to uh, through an electronic declaration. He will access the Brazilian Fiscal Authority's website through his personal identification uh, certificate. And then he's going to declare those assets through the, the name of the declaration is Derkach. And we also have the same uh, uh, secondary obligations that we had in Hertz One, which is which are number one, you have to declare those assets if you had an account or uh, some uh, like a house or something for the Brazilian Central Bank, and also you have to rectify your in, uh, tax income declarations of the other years, and finally you'll have to tax. Uh, some uh, gains that you had in this time period. But basically, it's the same procedure that we had with Hertz One. Uh, of course, you have to consult and hire. This is our opinion. You have to consult and hire the, the, a team of lawyers. Uh, yeah, Andy, the, if you have any the possibility to hire an international team, the better, because uh, they'll be able to deal with the things internationally. And then uh, the best approach is to uh, declare those assets through this, uh, all these procedures and uh, with the recommendation of an international team of lawyers that uh, can examine uh, the, the things that you had. So uh, basically it's the same procedures uh, declared through the CAC and also there's uh, secondary obligations that they are really important. Okay, so like the, the, the declaration for the central bank, uh, the penalty if you don't declare is really high. It's something that it goes up to almost 100,000 dollars so uh, you have to to make all these declarations to be uh, uh, in compliance with the Brazilian law. Simoes, how much time do we have? How much time we have to legalize the assets? Well, well Enzo, this is uh, critical now. Uh, the, the, the Hertz 2, they, they gave us only 120 days, so it's just four months. Uh, the, the deadline is uh, July 31st, uh, it's a very, very tiny time period. So our recommendation is uh, uh, for people to adhere. The sooner the better, because we have two uh, specific things that can happen to this uh, possible declarance. The first one is we have an oscillation. The dollar is fluctuating. Uh, uh, so we, we, never, we can never tell what is going to happen with the dollar in Brazil, the, the currency. And the second thing is that 
uh, as we have experienced. Many clients, they come, they came in the last moment. And then we, we of course, we had to increase our price because we were working uh, day and night, uh, seven days a week to make all the declarations. It was a huge amount of declarations and they came in the last moment. So our recommendation is for people to come the sooner the better. The price is going to be lower and we can make a better job because we can analyze all the documentations, we can sit with the client, we can explain everything. So uh, the sooner the better. This is the, our recommendation and finally, this is just 120 days, which is too, too, too tiny time period. The deadline, I repeat, is July 31st this year, 2017. Thank you, Simoes, for all this very new information you gave us today to help our audience to legalize their assets. We heard Simoes Barta from Sao Paulo, Brazil, and now I close here from Zurich the session regarding Herc number two, regarding the news on Herc number two. But if you have a question, don't hesitate to pick up the phone now and give me a question. You can ask me for a question or you can call directly to Sibor Sparta and ask questions for free. Take this unique opportunity and ask questions for free. And I give you one tip, legalize your assets. Because if you legalize the assets, you have something. If you don't do it, you have only problems. It is worth to have the, all these problems? No, it's not worth. Be rich and remain rich. Have a wonderful day.